So this is lesson three in the iOS learning path, and this lesson is about views and view controllers and plugins and things on the screen. In the last lesson, we talked about what iOS did fundamentally, meaning how it managed what applications were installed on the device and which ones were running. And in this application, we're going to add something to the screen. We're going to actually do something. Um, we won't get too complicated, and we'll try to keep this short, but this is a um, really important topic, how, how iOS um, loads screens. So I have the application running, the same one that we did, um, the same one we were working on before. This application was not created using BuzzTouch. This is a simple application that we created using Xcode. I have it running in the simulator, and it's just a blank white screen. It's called Harbor, <clears throat> just like before. So let's jump right into it. So your application's base file, I like to call it a base file, is called the application's delegate. And it's this application delegate that controls um, everything about the way that your application behaves when it first launches. So you'll see some of the names of these methods, these built-in iOS methods. And these are different events. These are methods that run when different events happen. So we talked a little bit about events in the last lesson. And you can see by looking at some of these event names when this might happen. So as a developer, if we wanted to do something when the application terminated, we would write code right inside the application will terminate method. If we wanted to write some code in the application did become active method, meaning it came from the foreground. And so these are all the methods that, that are um, fired automatically by iOS when a certain event happens. And the one that we're going to work with right now is called did finish launching with options. And this is the method that fires as soon as your application launches. And so really, all that's happening right now is iOS um, is working with, with an object called a window. So you'll see here self.window. And you'll also see here that iOS has set the background color, self.window.background color, is white color. I say iOS set the background color, the developer Remember, this, this came this way when we started a project. The developer is setting it to white. And then we're, we're setting the window um, as the, the key window and making it visible. And you'll see this in all the iOS applications that you work with. Every iOS app has to have a window. So everything starts with this window object. So a simple example is we could change the window background color to red and run this application. And all we did was change the color, and you can see that it's red now. I recompiled, of course, because each time we make a change in Xcode, we need to recompile our application. So let's get on with it. So there's this concept called views and subviews. So a UI view is an object that you see on the screen. Everything that you see on a screen in an application is a view. So if we go back to our, our UI, view, uh, UI view, excuse me, and this stands for user interface view. So let's go back to our iPhone here, the simulator, and look at the, the, um, the contacts app. So if I launch the contacts app, this is a view. This whole screen is called a view. The search bar is actually another view, and it's a sub view. The title bar is a view. The plus button is a view. The label, all contacts, is a view. Everything on this screen is a different view. So I can already, just by looking at this, I can see one, two, three. The label no contacts would be another view. That'd be four. There's lots of views. And so these are called subviews. So the first thing to understand about iOS is when you're working with iOS, there's lots and lots of times where you'll see the word UI view, or you'll see something like UI label, or UI text view or text field, all different things. And you can see all of these are views. So the reason I call them views is they're, technically speaking, they're um, all of these widgets that you add to the screen are subviews of the parent UI view. And we're not going to get into um, object-oriented programming in this lesson, but just understand that every widget is a subview, I mean a subclass of a UI view. Another way to say that is UI view is the parent view parent class for all the widgets. But we're just going to work with the basic view. So if I wanted to add a view to the screen, one way I could do it is I could just create a view. And don't, don't worry about the syntax here. Just try to follow along. So we'll create a view, and we'll call it my view. And we need to allocate that view. So this equals UI view allocate init with 
How about I knit with frame? And a frame um, is a square. It's a box or a rectangle. It's got a, a width, a height, a, an x and a y position, a coordinate, or a top and a left if you're if you come from the web programming. So we'll use core graphics and we'll do rect make to make a um, a UI view and and we need a rectangle to initialize it here. Initialize with frame. So core graphics rect make and we'll say 10 pixels from the left, that's the x coordinate, 40 pixels from the top, that's the y coordinate. We'll say 200 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall. So we've made a view here. In this view, um, as it stands right now, and it's not like in my code. Do I have a do I have a typo somewhere? I must have a typo somewhere. Let's see. So good thing Xcode's helping us out here. It's saying, hey, it doesn't like the way that I've done this. But let's see what happens. So we'll say, after we've created our view, we'll say self.window add subview. And we're going to add my view. And I see here Xcode's helping me out with a little red notice. I must have some syntax here. Uh, do I have a typo? Ah, see there's no I. It's UI view. So all we did is we created a view in code. We told it what size it should be. And we added it as a sub view to the window. So if we save this and run it, we're not going to see anything on the screen. And this is interesting. And I did, I did this to trick you. Views begin blank. If it's just a UI view, it's going to begin blank. So we need to add something to it so we can see it. Let's set the background color. So we'll talk to this view. We'll say my view, set background color. And it needs a UI color, which is another object. And we'll say green color. And now this view here, my view, has a background color of green. And then we'll add it to the as a sub view so we'll be able to see it. So we'll recompile this and launch it in the simulator again. And there's the view we just created. So that's one way to do it, is just to work with straight UI views. And oftentimes UI views will be used as containers to hold other things. For example, let's say we wanted to add a text view. We would say UI text view, my text view equals UI text view allocate init with frame. We'll make another frame. We'll say core graphics rec make. <clears throat> we'll make this 15 degrees from the edge, or 15 degrees, 15 pixels from the from the left edge, 15 pixels from the top edge. We'll make it 100 pixels wide, and we'll make it 20 pixels tall. So this text view now, got another typo. I'm just typoing all night long here. So this text view, just like the original view, is blank. So let's add some text to it so we can see it. My text view, we'll talk to the text view, set text, this is text, and let's add this text view to the sub view that we already created. So my view, add sub view, my text view. Now we'll have a green box, and we'll have a text view that's 15 pixels from the left and 15 pixels from the top of its parent view, in this case, my view. And then we'll run this, and we set some text so that we could see it on the screen. And that's all we have. This is text. So we added two views to the, to the, um, the application's window. So the green box is a sub view, and this UI text view is another sub view. So that's one way to do it, is just manually, just hardcore code-like. You can just type and type and type, and you can add anything you want to the screen. Another object that you'll see over and over again is this concept or this object called UI View Controller. And UI View Controllers are a little bit more sophisticated than UI Views. Um, but the easiest way to, to, to get your head around this is UI View Controllers are usually, usually files that exist on their own and separately in your project that you use to control other views. And lots of the different um, screen types, all of the plugins that you see in BuzzTouch projects are UI view controllers. They're actually subclasses of UI view controllers. So to use a view, UI view controller, which is um, a better way to do it than just adding views, what we do 
is we create a couple new files. So I can just um, command click. I just use two fingers. I think it's command. No, control click. There you go, control click, and I'll say new file. And we're going to make a view controller. So we'll say Objective-C class. And then over here, we can subclass this from a UI view controller. We will call this um, root view controller. And we'll say next. So what we're doing here is it's asking us where we would like to save it. We'll save it in our project. And what you'll see when we create this are two files, a .h and a .m. A .h is known as the interface file, and the .m is known as the implementation file. And because we used Xcode to do this, it wrote some methods for us automatically. It wrote the view did load method. It wrote the, it wrote the view did unload method. And we can now use this class. This is called a class that we created on our own, and we named it root view controller. We can now use this class in, our, in other places in our application. So before we can use it in our code, though, we need to import that class so that Xcode knows, knows that we want to use it. In other words, the compiler will yell at us if we don't import files before we use them. So we want to use the root view controller file, and we're going to create what's known as an instance of this root view controller and, and add its view to the screen. So let's say root view controller, my root view controller equals root view controller init, uh, excuse me, allocate, and we'll just say init. And now we have an object called root view controller. Now we want to add its view, or we want to add it as the root view controller of our application. Every application has a root view controller, so we can set um, self dot set root view controller my root view controller and we are all set so it's saying hey it's got another it's got an oh, allow look at that boy I'm just full of these typos and what's this warning here this warning saying instance method set root and view set root view controller not found aha so let's say self dot window does that work hey what do you know so this is a view controller and I'm going to compile this and show you that nothing's going to happen, but it's, it's an important concept anyway. So this view controller is blank. It has a property of its own view, but we haven't manipulated the view yet. So let's do that. So this view controller, my root view controller, let's talk to its view. And let's set its background color to UI color about black. Now we've said this is a view controller. We instantiated an object. We set its view property. We set its background color to black. And then we told iOS, hey, we want our application's window to use this view controller as its root view controller. So let's run this and see what happens. What do you know? It's all black. So interestingly, we didn't set a frame here because view controllers don't have frames. Their views begin full screen. They default to full screen. So let's get rid of this and do this a different way. Another way and the better way to manipulate view controllers is to manipulate them in their own implementation file. So remember the, the events that iOS helps us understand? We want iOS to tell us, in fact, it will tell us whether we act on it or not. Hey, let me know when this root view controller loads. So view did load. So when we do it this way, we can say self.view, and self is referring to the view controller itself, self.view, set background color, UI color um, green. Now this is the same result as before, we're going to get a green full screen here. It's the same result as before, but we're doing it like professional programmers doing it. We're setting code associated with this view controller in its file. Um, professional programmers do it that way to stay organized and to keep all of their code associated with this view controller in its file 
um, because it's just a much better way to do it. It's much more portable that way. Um, it's much easier to debug that way. And look how look how small the code is here um, as compared to writing hundreds or maybe even thousands of lines of code all in this section of your app. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's a quick summary of UI views and UI view controllers. The last thing we're going to talk, out, talk about is plugins. And we're just going to talk briefly on this. You'll see in your BuzzTouch projects a whole folder full of plugins. We call it BT plugins. Those plugins are nothing more than view controllers, UI view controllers, with their own custom names. So an example of that is, is let's, see, let's say that you have a plugin called BT Screen Web View. That's what the interface file looks like. And this is what the implementation file looks like. And it's just full of its own methods. And so all of the um, BuzzTouch plugins are subclasses of UI view controllers. I'm going to put this back so that we can not break our code. Um, so the thing to keep in mind are UI views and UI view controllers are similar but also very different. UI views um, are kind of standalone objects and they are the parent class for all of the widgets on the screens like text views and buttons and lists and things. And view controllers control other UI views. So that's a quick lesson on um, screens and views and plugins, how plugins load or what plugins are based off. We didn't teach anything about a plugin yet. And until next time, we'll see you around.